All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me in this 2009 Mercedes S320, which I've just bought for £4,250, which I think is quite a good deal. It does have a number of issues, but I'm hoping that's cheap enough to allow me to get those done and still make a profit. I got an email last week from a viewer called Keith who asked me if I wanted to buy his father-in-law's cars. His father-in-law was no longer driving, and he had this 2009 S-Class and also a 2005 Honda Civic. They both sounded really nice, genuine cars. The Civic, I think, had been in the family from you, and this S-Class had been in the family for years. This one's the three litre turbo diesel V6, but it's only done 81, 82,000 miles, which is nothing really for one of these. It wouldn't be my first choice, I'd have gone with a five litre petrol personally, but for fuel economy, you can't really beat it. Since I've been driving this today, I've done 36.2 miles per gallon. So I've had quite a busy day today. I drove up to Hull to collect these two cars. Then from Hull, I drove up to a place called Malton in North Yorkshire to go and attend the Bangers and Cash live show which was really good actually. I filmed a video while I was there as well, so if you haven't seen that, check it out. All that means today I've spent about three and a half or four hours driving this S-Class, and so far so good. Such would. This is the W221 model, which ran from 2006 until 2014, and I'm a big fan. I'm thinking this is worth about £7,000 all done up, so it owes me four two fifty. If I set myself a budget of around £1,500, then it'll owe me five seven fifty. so it should still leave me a healthy profit. But yeah, I'll slow down. As always, before I agreed to buy it, I checked it out using Car Vertical, and as you can see, it's never been stolen, never had a mileage rollback, there's no outstanding finance, and it's never been involved in a recorded accident. It's really important that you do one of these checks before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike. It isn't expensive, it doesn't take long, and it can stop you buying a car with a hidden past. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the reg or the VIN. In this case, we know it's Lima Tango 09 Hotel Whiskey Sierra. And then check vehicle and it checks hundreds of millions of cars across dozens of countries' databases. It's a really thorough check. In the case of this one, the mileage is steady every year. The previous owner's had it since 2011 and hasn't done that many miles. There have been a good number of advisory items on the MOTs over the years, but the most recent ones haven't thrown up anything too concerning. On the last one, they picked up the fact that the near side front tyre was slightly perished or cracking and the rear reg plate was deteriorated. So there was nothing really there to put me off buying it. If you want to do one of these checks for yourself, and I've always found it to be really helpful, then you'll save yourself 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do if you use my promo code HIGHPEAK or alternatively I'll leave the link below in the video description. Mechanically it's fine, it pulls well, I've got no engine lights on or flashing glow plug lights so we're all good on that front. It needs a little bit of TLC on the body and the interior, it just wants, wants getting at really, it wants a few little jobs sorting. It's been parked up on the guy's driveway for a couple of years and it really hasn't done many miles and you can tell and that doesn't do anything any good. Cars like to be driven, not stood still does them no favours whatsoever. It should be a fairly simple process this to get it back to its former glory. In fact, let me give you a tour of it. Right, well here she is then. It's done 81,000 miles, which is nothing for one of these, especially on an 09. It's, what, 14 years old. It's quite a good spec as well. So we've got heated seats. My last S-Class on the 06 didn't have that. Electric seats, and you can also control the passenger seat from this side. So you press that, and then you can move the seat. How cool is that? You can also turn on the heated seat on the other side. Very clever. It's got this nice, I think it's burr walnut or something, and then it's got a tan, or not tan, like a ivory sort of, like a very light beige leather interior. We've also got sat nav and a reverse camera. Cause it's some slack, it's a 2009. Uh, so in terms of what I need to do inside, We've got a couple of error messages. I've got a fault with the auxiliary battery. If it tells me, where will it tell me? Two messages, right. Uh, there's an issue with one of the tires. I think we've got a slow puncture. And also an issue with the auxiliary battery, battery malfunction. In addition to that, the air conditioning doesn't work. So I need to get that regassed or checked, but everything else works. All the windows, mirrors, etc. Let me show the outside. I think it's obsidian black, most of them were. So it's obsidian black and it's just nice and original. Got no privacy glass, just looks nice and clean and nice and honest. The previous owner, when I looked through the history, previous owners had it since it was two years old. So for somebody to buy a two year old S-Class, they must have been doing all right. The wheel could do with a refurbish. We've got a Continental up front, 
Conti Sport Contact on about 4 mil. Paintwork looks okay. We've got those bi xenon lights. It's almost towing a horse box there with a hybrid RAV4. I'm quite impressed. We've got a Continental round here. That's quite new actually, or at least it feels like there's plenty of tread left. That's probably on about 6 mil. It just needs a very good clean and buff, really. Just loads of little bits of moss and dirt everywhere where it's been sat parked up. But what do you think? I think it'll make a car. It's crying out for new reg plates as well. But yeah, look at this. There's just kind of dirt and muck and cobwebs everywhere where it's been parked up. So just need some TLC really. We've got some chrome trim here as well and I haven't figured out where that goes. I thought perhaps at the top there but it's not big enough. Oh let me look at this tyre. I think this is the one with the slow puncture. One was advised on the last MOT as well. So that's about, mm, it's on about five mil of tread, five or six mil. It's another Continental Sport Contact and oh, it must have been that one. That one's quite, quite bald out on that edge. That will be, I imagine, where it's been mounting curbs. Always seems to happen on the near side. So I'll replace that. I'll try and get like for like. They're normally cracked as well. But yeah, I love that interior. Those back seats look like they've never been used. Typical S-Class gadgets. We've got headrests which pop up and pop down. You always accuse me of being heavy handed and I kind of am. Oh yes, cup holders. Nice old thing, isn't it? Need some new mats. And I think I can transform this fairly easily. It needs a I'll give it a full service, I'll run it to SPR. Why's that window not working? Run it to SPR and get them to give it a full service. And all the other jobs that I need to do. Ah, my window lock, my window switch was uh, pressed. Right, well I think for now that's all I can show you. What I'm going to do now then is drive home and get some dinner because I'm starving. And then tomorrow, the work begins on the old S-Class. Well, we're back in the old S-Class and I think it now looks like a Mercedes S-Class should imposing and regal. I've actually done quite a few miles in this car, coming up to 1200 actually, because we used this car as the shadow car when we did our trip to John O'Groats in the old 2003 Mercedes S-Class. If you haven't seen that video yet, I took an old Mercedes S-Class that I bought for just £1,500 and I took it all the way to John O'Groats, right at the top of Scotland. It's a really nice old thing this. I spent hours and hours both behind it and in front of it on the way up to John O'Groats and I couldn't help but think it's aged really well. I've always been a big fan of the W221 Mercedes anyway. I just think they're cool. And they kind of look a bit, a bit Maybach-y. Maybach. Maybach. Sadly though, that's where my glowing review of this car ends because it has cost me a considerable amount of money to get right. Before I did the thousand mile round trip to Scotland in this, I took it down to my mechanics. I asked them to replace that tire that was advised on the last MOT. I asked them to replace the auxiliary battery because it was coming up with a fault. And I asked them to just give it a general check over and make sure it was all okay. I thought I'd be sensible for once and do a lights and levels check before I went on such a long journey. Whilst it was down there, my mechanic noticed that the right hand side exhaust back box was hanging a little bit lower than the one on the left and it needed a new bracket. So they did that, they replaced the tyre, replaced the auxiliary battery, then I picked it up and got it back to work and I called Mike the aircon man out to come and recharge the air conditioning. He filled up the gas and I got quite excited because it was blowing ice cold. That was quite short lived though as you can tell with my windows down. Within just 24 hours all the gas had gone and it was blowing warm again. Terrific. When I got back from Scotland, I dropped it off at SPR, who are a Mercedes specialist that I always use down in Stockport, and I asked them to give it a full engine service and a gearbox service. The next day they called me to say when they were doing the gearbox service, the gearbox sump pan was quite corroded. They didn't want to put it back. So I agreed to replace that with a brand new one. I think it was only 64, 65 quid, so it's a bit of a no-brainer really. But apart from that, it all checked out fine. Whilst it was down there, I asked them to investigate the air con system and get it working again for me. 
think it's crucial I get that working. Anyway, because they were short staffed, they didn't have chance, so I've got to run it back there at a later date. I suspect, and I say I suspect because that's what they told me, they suspect, they suspect that it's the condenser that's gone. But they need to spend some time on it and make sure that's exactly what it is. So I'll have to run it back there at a later date. From there, I took it for its wheel refurbs. Now, they weren't too bad to be honest, but I just knew that they could be improved. So I've had all four wheels repaired and resprayed, and they look as good as new now. I think it's really helped to make the car pop and stand out. Then I got it back to work and fitted some new reg plates because the old ones are looking quite worn and tatty. And I think that was £15 well spent. Then it needed a full detail clean and buff. There were quite a few swirl marks all over the body. And there were a few imperfections here and there and I knew it could be improved. I took it down to Niall at the detailing guys and he's done a really good job. The interior cleaned up nicely as well. He cleaned all the pale leather upholstery and it looks like new. I got it back to work and photographed it and I've currently got this advertised for 6995 You know what's coming, don't you? It's an awful lot of car for the money, don't you think? Genuinely, it is though. 6995 for a well-sorted Mercedes S-Class with 82,000 miles on the clock. I'm not a big fan of diesels, I've mentioned this many times before, but if this were the 500, then I think I'd just keep it. I'm hoping I get my 6995 for it quite soon so I can spin the money back round. So what I'm going to do now is work out my costs and work out if there's any profit left in it. Like a bloody rocket ship. It is actually very quick, this, for a big old barge. Although the steering is disconcertingly vague. Alan Partridge reference for you there. Right, here we'll do that. Another lovely day up here today. May as well knock the old engine off. Save the polar bears. Right, I paid £4,250 for the car. In fact, let's work backwards. So we'll start at 6995 my advertised price. Less 4250 less £180 for the wheel refurbs, less the auxiliary battery was £72, the near side front tyre was 126 I went with a matching Continental, so that total was 23760 Ah, I forgot to mention that, I ordered two new wheel nuts. Two of the wheel nuts were, when the wheel refurb guy took them off, they'd kind of... Um, corroded a little bit so I've replaced both of those or two of those they were £12.60 plus the VAT the offside exhaust back box bracket was £14.60 uh, there was a bulb for a reg plate £4.50 that sounds dear for a bulb labour £22.50 so my total there was £49.92 my bill at SPR, right, so labour to carry out B service on a V6 diesel, £290. Carry out 7-speed gearbox service, including all parts, £250. Gearbox sump pan, £64. My total there was £720. By the way, they also did me a print-off of the service history as well. So, it was serviced in 2012, 13, 14, 15. The last proper one was done in 2015 at 54,000 miles. And I've done it again. What else have I spent money on? Oh, £15 on reg plates and £60 on the Aircon Regas, which is now somewhere out there in the ether. Right, this is interesting now. If I get my 6995 for the car, this will leave me a profit of, pre-VAT by the way and pre-tax, £1,467.36. But, not so fast, we still need to fix the air conditioning. If that costs me, such wood, let's... Let's say it cost me another £500, then my total will be £967. Hmm. Don't want to sound now like I've lost grip with reality, but that's it's not really worth the effort, is it, that? £967 before VAT and tax. Oh well, you live and learn. Right. Well, on that note, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. Oh, and TikTok. Forget TikTok. Uh, and yeah, see you next time. Cheers, guys.